Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to train our own AI model with TensorFlow. We're not using an API from OpenAI or Azure or Anthropic. We are building our own AI model. And this is going back to basics. You're going to have to get a data set. You're going to have to train it. Um, and we're going to output it in a TensorFlow format. Now, before I go any deeper, let me just give credits here. Uh, we are going to follow a tutorial from Mikhail Salnikov very, very closely. Um, you can see his article here, NL NLP Keras model in browser with TensorFlow.js. But let's, let's go back for a second. What is TensorFlow? Well, TensorFlow is this amazing toolkit for AI and machine learning. Um, before OpenAI and, and these uh, models became APIs, you could train your own model. You can have a data set of anything you want, really. Uh, there's a lot of text, of course, but you could take pictures of cars and identify whether they are um, made by Toyota or someone else. You could take pictures of coffee. Um, you could take pictures at your workplace and, and say whether these items would pass QA or not. Um, and so a lot of what you would have done is go through TensorFlow and it skips out a lot of the math, uh, a lot of the fine tuning and that, that you may have done if you were even before that generation. <clears throat> now, why we're going with TensorFlow is because unlike an API, you can run TensorFlow locally. So first of all, you can run TensorFlow and you, you probably have to run TensorFlow locally to train your model, but you can provide that model, uh, put it on your website, put it in your app, and they can run it on their phones without an internet connection. Whereas all of these AI you know, chatbots, AI APIs, they depend on the internet. They have to send that data to a server and then send it to OpenAI to get a response back down that chain and come back to you. If you don't have the internet, if you don't have internet, it's not going to work. Now the real problem is that connecting to the internet, you're sending information out there. So this goes back to a project I was working on a few weeks ago on this channel as well. We had local PII scrubber. So if I put something like my phone number is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero, um, I can click scrub PII and hopefully it gets rid of phone numbers, addresses, emails, things like that that are personal information. And so you can see, took out the phone number and just replaced it with a stamp. Um, the problem here is that Yes, that's really good at recognizing credit card numbers, social security, um, social insurance numbers, uh, phone numbers, email addresses, things like that. But it really struggles when you have something like, my full name is Homer Simpson and I work at Apple. Okay, it's going to do nothing. It doesn't recognize the name, that's a big one. and. Uh, you may want to get rid of company names as well. So if you're working at an enterprise in a business, you may not want that information out there. So what I wanted to do is build something completely local. It's run on your phone. You can cut off the internet. You could have a machine that has no internet connection and still be able to run this, scrub your data, get rid of the phone numbers, first names, company names, mailing addresses, all of that. And so we used um, <clears throat> regular expressions to get rid of a lot of these easy ones. But something that's really hard is first name, last name. Um, your name could be Bob, Homer, Lisa. It could be a lot of different things. And at that point, you kind of want AI. And the tool you want to use or the um, the name of the model you want to use is called Named Entity Recognition, NER. 
And what's going to happen is you're going to identify certain things. So for example, uh, UN officials, Ekias, I'm not sure what that is, heads for Baghdad. Uh, oh, sorry, that's a name. So UN is an organization. Let me zoom in here. UN over here is an organization. Ekias is a person name and Baghdad is a location. Um, you need a bit of AI to pick that up unless you have a full complete library of all the names, all of the organizations, all of the cities, and that just doesn't really happen. Now, there's a couple different ways you could go about this, but basically you can start putting TensorFlow into your project and just import it. I'm going to be using TensorFlow.js because I'm doing a website, but there are TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, for example, could be built into Android and iOS apps, and you would download other people's models if you were lazy. Now, I couldn't find an NER model, um, but you could you could find different things like classification. So, for example, um, <clears throat> there are image ones that will recognize it looks like landmarks. Um, I'm not sure what these other things are. Uh, if you go through text, uh, you can classify things. Not great examples. Toxicity, so very toxic comments, for example. I couldn't find a named entity recognition, but there are lots of people building it. So this one in 2020 from Bhuvana Kundumani um, built an NER in TensorFlow. Not the same uh, project I would like because these models don't necessarily work across all of the formats. Um, but I, I did read through them just to look at the... Um, the uh, choices that she made. But both um, Buvana and Mikhail used the same uh, data set, the Con LL Con uh, 2003 data set, in which, you know, 1,500, 1,000 uh, German news articles uh, were used and everything was classified so that they would have an organization, a person, a location. And what's really awesome is Mikhail is act actually built something that in many ways is similar. So if I take a look, he has this demo up with um, on his website, and I'm just going to copy and paste a few examples here. So um, Apple is one of the largest phone makers in the world, search entities. Oh, um, and you can see very clearly they believe that Apple is an organization, which is correct. Um, and depending on the threshold, they think there's a percentage chance that world is something. Uh, if we pick another example, the SEC was investigating Google. Uh, it picked up SEC, but didn't pick up Google. Surprising, it looks like it was uh, quite, quite strong as well so maybe it just didn't hit the right threshold um it would be a simple matter of taking this model and uh instead of putting this little tag at the end of it just replacing it with bracket bracket organization or bracket bracket person name um, or some other identifier like we did with uh the pii scrubber okay so couple of different things. This is a great demo. This is what I really liked about it. But um, if I do something even simpler, like the fox was looking at Bob, um, it stumbles a bit. So fox, it thinks it's an organization. Bob uh, is a person. That one's correct. We just saw that it didn't identify Google. I was hoping that I would pair his workflow here and some of the uh, processing that Buvana did to get a better model. Now, if you look at his GitHub, I think he actually provides the model. Maybe not here, but I saw somewhere that the model was available to download. So in theory, I could just borrow this, but I just don't think he did a great job of training it. So I'm going to do it from scratch bring it up to 2023, um, but his GitHub 
uh, repository is a great, great start. So I'm going to paste all of these links into the description and you can follow through. It's very, I always find it a lot easier to follow through text than a video, but I'm gonna log off um, or turn off sound and work quickly just to get the repository downloaded, set everything up and make sure that's running before we start changing these choices. Okay, so while everything is installing from uh, this TensorFlow uh, implementation, let's walk through what is actually happening and what uh, I've chosen to do here. So first of all, um, if we read through um, this particular blog post, he will fully admit that um, you know this, this approach is not state of the art, it's not perfect, Lots of flaws, but this is one in which it's quick, it's dirty, it explains how this all works. So, um, this is a really good roadmap to follow, but it looks like a lot more, um, a few more steps were taken to try and train um, the model properly on this one. So I'm using Buvana's, um, her repository as the base because she has done additional work on top of this blog as well um, that we could also leverage. But let's walk through Mikhail's um, walkthrough because I think it's uh, a lot easier to follow. So first of all, he does an explanation of what's in that data, that there are words and they are given labels like location and person. Um, from there, what he's doing is he is pre-processing this text. Um, if you think about what a computer looks at, it's not really this Mr. Johnson likes, it's not looking at words. You are converting all the text into numbers. You are padding it so that they're all the same size. You are um, manipulating and cleaning the data so that you can compare apples to apples throughout. So what he's doing with the preprocessor is, first of all, you can see lower casing everything, taking out all of the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, punctuations. And then from there, he's trying to read the data in because it's in this massive text file, read it in, process it, change it into um, basically uh, numbers. So he's doing all of that. And um, once he has a comparable set, he splits it into training material, test materials, and so on. Finally, he actually starts creating the model. Now, what normally happens is you do a lot of these layers. Um, and what that means is um, you are asking, you're asking TensorFlow to traverse through the data find certain patterns and then apply it again and see if it matches up. So it makes a guess that every time, let's say these groups of numbers show up, um, it makes that prediction that'll be good. Then it evaluates it. So it tries it out on other sets of these, um, of these examples and finds it doesn't work so good um, or it does and that reward and uh, punishment system will kind of move towards what is right and in this case he's only done a handful of layers but what you would normally do is have uh, many many layers you would train it once so it knows to pick up 
large numbers at the start. Uh, let's say names often start sentences. I think that's probably true. Um, so that's a good bet. And then the next one is you might want to find all the letters because names start more often with A, C, D, and not Z or something. Um, and all of these layers will give it more and more smarts and basically more rules to follow under. So he's just chosen a few simple ones. And um, he's just chosen a few simple layers just to show the example. Uh, afterwards, uh, he runs through the training, he exports a model, so you save a model out there, and that is your output. You can use the model anywhere, your apps, your websites. So the next step is that he brings the model and loads it into the web application. So. Um, we could skip that. He loads it into the web application and he also loads up TensorFlow. So when you start your, um, your, your website, it opens TensorFlow. It starts uh, parsing through that, uh, that uh, model. Now the problem is when you just put a sentence into the website, you're going to need to go through those exact same steps. So you can see he does the same pre-processing. Um, the same kind of removing punctuation, moving everything to lowercase. Um, so he does the same pre-processing so that you're comparing apples to apples. And then you apply the model and you make predictions and then you interpret those predictions so that you can add it to your user interface. If you look at what um, Buvana has done, uh, she does the same thing. Pre-processing, it... it um, it looks like she does it a little bit differently. Um, then uh, she splits it up so that you have you know, your training model, your testing model, and so on. Um, but more importantly, he's, she starts training. Um, she starts training, and it seems to me like she's put more thought into it, and she's uh, done a bit more fine-tuning. So she'll fine-tune what she wants to find, uh, she does multiple models and eventually she creates a, a model. Um, so you can see this is how she trained it. And then she tests it out to see if it's a, a good result. Um, and that's the end of her article. But you can see that she's also created an API um, that, that will interpret that data. So uh, what I have to do is uh, follow her training. I don't even think I have to do anything because her code is right up there, so I just have to run it. But what I have to do is take her pre-processing um, pre style and convert it into uh, JavaScript. So I might even be able to do this with uh, the help of AI, convert this into JavaScript, that does a bit of pre-processing, and then we can make predictions in the same way apples to apple. But because her pre-processing is different, I realize now that I basically can't use this guide at all, even though this was super useful from a conceptual understanding point of view. Anyways, we got this all um, running, so I gotta go back and try and figure out and, and try and actually run everything.
All right, I think it is time to call it quits. I think I went down a wrong path, and we will revisit this again in a different path. But let's talk about what we, what I did to try and make this work. So again, we were using, it's not the right one. Um, We were using the more sophisticated version, Buvana, who, who did a really good um, training, and this is not it, uh, took many more steps to train a really sophisticated model. And what I did was uh, she had this um, infer function. Uh, and and it's, it's meant to be the basis for an API, and I merely rearranged it so that we could um, very quickly put together code um, to, to test it, put a test sentence, put a test paragraph, um, get the right models out. And I had to make some changes to make it uh, work more efficiently. Um, really just pulling the different pieces together in one flow. And the idea is once I got it working, I would be able to convert it into um, a into JavaScript. So that's where this comes in. Uh, this is not working at all, but um, this was just when I asked ChatGPT to translate Python code over to, um, to JavaScript. And it, it made a whole bunch of suggestions that didn't make sense, and I was trying to track down packages that didn't exist. Um, but I think that is one possible way to get this working. Um, because I am able to use this text, text and, and move it over. Um, what I'm realizing right now is that that is a, a lot of work and it's not meant to work this way. So um, I think a better path would be to go with the simpler approach, um, the, the simpler package from Mikhail and because he already has a website uh, and a web interface to test this, to go through that process and instead to retrain his model. So I think it makes more sense to look at his model and add more layers to the training. Now, if you take a look at what we did on, uh, on the more sophisticated one, there was 10 epochs of training. It was an incredible amount of time. I left it overnight. I think it probably just took uh, a couple hours, but I left it overnight to train. So it, it's quite sophisticated, quite a long process for a fairly small amount of data. So um, I think we could get a much better, um, much better uh, responses if we just tweaked this code, added more layers, took more time to train it properly and adjust these things to make it work. Um, and, and that's where it is. I, I don't think it, was, it made a lot of sense for me to try and translate this over and get it all working. Um, in part, it's hard, um, but also in part because it shouldn't need to go through all of this. This will impact user uh, the, the speed at which somebody could just log in on the website and try this out as well. So simpler is better. I think what I'm going to do is train this this particular model instead and have it basically all ready to go anyways. Anyways, um, you know, sometimes you gotta toss in the towel. That's what's fun about the hobby projects is if you hit a mistake, that's okay. Um, you don't have to just plow through it anyways as you might at work. So um, I will see you guys next week. I might revisit this, but I think this one is such a simple project because we are just going to add a handful of these um, handful of layers that I, I might just skip it altogether. Thanks for watching.